imagine having all your project's costs and benefits in one place. Easy to understand, easy to summarize, easy to share. No more hunting through emails, invoices and timesheets. And best of all, no more dread that someone's going to ask you about your costs and you won't have a clear answer. If you're managing projects, you already know that tracking costs and benefits isn't optional, it's essential. Without a clear view of past spending and future forecasts, budgets will spiral, benefits get lost, and decision making turns into guesswork. That's why I use a project cost and benefits tracker, a straightforward way to keep everything in one place. Historical costs, resource and non-resource forecasts, financial benefits, and even the operational costs of using whatever the project delivers. I was going to show you how to build it, but I spent about two hours tinkering with it, so I'm gonna skip past that. What I will do is walk you through exactly how it works, and if you want to use it yourself, there's a link in the description. Firstly, I've populated the template with a little data to test the values of pulling through correctly and to assist with the demo. The tool has seven tabs. Let's skip past the summary first and look at that last and start with resource costs. These are the costs of resources working directly on the delivery of the project. Most of the tabs are split in this way with two tables, forecast and actual. Forecast is where you estimate your costs and benefits into the future. Actuals are used to show the amount that has been, to date, spent or gained during the project. In these tables, you add the names of your resources, their roles and their day rates. In some organizations, it's not possible to get the exact day rate and it may be a little insensitive to just go and ask them for it. You may need to check with your HR department to find out what the average rate is for someone in this type of role. In the past, I've created a rate card tab to capture all the key roles and their average salaries and use lookups to include them in my calculations. But for this tool, we're trying to keep it simple. If having a visible day rate becomes an issue when sharing your data, then hide the column. This preserves the data but avoids broadcasting sensitive data. Regarding day rates, a question that I get frequently asked is whether this should be based on the gross pay the resource receives or whether it should include other costs like their additional benefits and taxes. In this situation, I don't mind. It's your data. The best thing you can do though is check with your finance team and your leadership how they want it and then be consistent. Don't have some people listed with full package and taxes and some without. You'll notice the working days tracking across the top of the months. That's based on the UK's working calendar with bank holidays and weekends removed. In the cells that align the month with your resource, just drop in the number of days they're expected to work in the forecast and the days they have actually worked in the actual table. The various calculation tools will do the rest, working out how much is being spent on that resource per year. But why not do a running monthly cost? Honestly, I've never been asked for it. Senior leaders tend to be more focused on longer term, more strategic data than these kind of lower level costs. However, if you need a monthly breakdown, let me know in the comments and I'll add it in the next version of the tool. And if you're finding this helpful and you want to see my other tool demos, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Next, let's have a look at non-resource costs. These are the costs that are applied to the project that are not covered by salaries or contractor fees. However, you may notice there's a category in the dropdown under type for consulting services. Whilst that will be related to a human cost, yes, consultants are humans too, in this case, you're paying an external company. There's an argument to be made that all contractors should go into this category. I don't mind either way. You just do whatever's right for you. Again, complete the forecast and actuals to date. Next, we have operational costs or running costs or costs of the business or whatever you want to relabel it as. The next tab we're going to look at is financial benefits. And as soon as we start to include benefits that run past the lifespan of the project, we must include any additional costs the project has created to the business somewhere, and this is that place. In a previous version of this tool, I titled it Disbenefits, but leadership doesn't really understand or like that word. So, operational costs seem to be a less offensive choice of title. You use this for any additional costs that your project's created. For example, if there's a new software license that needs to be paid every year, it goes into here. If you needed to create a new team to deliver the service, their overall costs go into here. Next, we get into the reasons for having the project in the first place, benefits. In financial benefits, you list the types of financial benefits your project is creating and when they're likely to be received. And as usual, we don't just log the expected benefits and walk away. No, 
we include actuals. Completing this can be hard work, but do your best. It'll give you as a project manager greater credibility than any of your peers who try to avoid this part. Next, it's non-financial benefits. It's not easy to get this into a financial tool. It does feel a little bit shoehorned in, but it has value and offers context that you may need to support projects that aren't financially driven. Think of a benefit you're trying to add. In the as is column, list the current state of whatever it is you're trying to change. If staff have poor satisfaction, note it here. In the to be column, list the target states you want to get to. And then in your current year, add what progress has taken place. This tells a powerful story at a glance. Next, we have the data page. These are the values that you see whenever you use a dropdown selection somewhere else in the document. Feel free to change them as you wish. It's your tool now. Let's head back to the summary page. This is where all the data you've entered comes together to tell the story of your project. How much you plan to spend, how much you're actually spending, the benefits being realized versus the forecasted values, the cumulative cost or gains of the project, and an indication of when you'll break even, and the all important return on investment calculator. A few things to note, this page is brief and to the point, and it's small enough to be copied and pasted into whatever Steerco or comms pack you use. Where possible, just share this view rather than the entire working document. Most execs will recoil from the full cost and benefit tracker unless they suspect that there's a problem with the project, in which case they'll want to dig deeper into it. But in almost all cases, they just want this data. If they want something removed, then remove it. If they want something added, then add it. I might have mentioned, it's your tool now. What I will say is to be very careful about altering any cells that contain a formula. Be very careful. You may be looking at this and thinking it does what you need, but it's just a shame that it only covers three years. You'd rather it covered five or seven or 10. Whatever it is, let me know in the comments and just as soon as I get a chance, I'll update the template. In the meantime, it's not that complicated to make those types of changes yourself. And if you come up with any other improvements on this, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. There's more than one way to do this. This is just the way that I like and I hope it helps you to capture and share your project costs and benefits with confidence. The download link's in the description, and as I've said a few times now, it's all yours. Now, whilst this is good for a project, if you're tracking across a portfolio, you need a different type of resource tracker, so I'd recommend you consider this video next.